I visited Haida Gwaii way back, well over 10 years ago. And uh, Haida Gwaii has a certain magnetism. The first time I visited the community of the nation, something really stuck with me. It, it, uh, I've never been to a place that had such abundant nature still intact, and uh, not to mention all of the culture. So as an indigenous person, to see the, the, the strength and the stronghold that Haida Gwaii is with respect to nature and culture, um, it really gives one hope. It also gives one support and drive uh, to really protect uh, what's here and to also, you know, moving forward into this uh, transition economy to really see the Haida continue to become leaders in, in an emerging new economy and uh, an economy that's really about self-sufficiency. And that, so that's what this project's about, is self-sufficiency that's in harmony with traditional Haida indigenous values and, and culture. The interesting issue about Haida Gwaii, why is it special, is I think people that live on islands have a huge advantage. When you live on an island, whether you're indigenous or anybody, you know there are limits. You have to learn to live within the limits of those islands. And when you have, as you've seen on Haida Gwaii now for 40, 50 years, you have the Haida saying, this is our land. Don't tell us this is your land, it's our land. And we want to gain control over that land so that we can manage our forests and fisheries in a way that our ancestors did. And the Haida have been very, very successful at reacquiring the rights to their land. And when you think about it, energy is critical for any society. And here, the cost of diesel is tremendous. It's gotta be brought uh, across the, the waters. And uh, I know they're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars every year just for the cost of, of diesel. The Haida have lived on Haida Gwaii since time began. There are artifacts of Haida on every inch of every shoreline on Haida Gwaii. We were totally self-sufficient. We could travel wherever we wanted on our big canoes. We lived off the ocean, off the land. Everything we needed was here. It was a dream of one of the chief counselors many, many, many years ago in the 80s. His name was Chief Counselor Tom Green. He had this dream of building the Heritage Center down at Second Beach, where it is now at Kai. So the plan slowly revolved and um, eventually the Kai Center was built. And since it's been built, we found that the electrical is really high there. Like it's over 100,000 a year. And um, we realized that there was something we had to do about it because it was so costly. So we met Dave Isaac and the council and I met with him in Vancouver. And that was the beginning of talking about solar for the Kai Center. And now we're doing the biggest community project in BC. So this project uh, represents obviously a, a functional uh, value and in that it's going to greatly reduce the annual consumption of energy. But beyond that, more importantly, beyond the 
the nuts and bolts of it and the electrons. We're actually, and what I think is more significant, is we're actually bridging a very significant and important building to a star. And I think uh, when you think about that, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's poetry. And I think the more we can connect our local communities to a resource that is abundant, that is near infinite, like a star, it not only ensures a local future source of energy and secures a community, but it also creates what I think is a, is a very positive, inspiring way to reestablish a, a modern connection with nature. You can sit around a round table and you can discuss concepts and they remain concepts till you see it coming through to fruition. And while I'm hearing them installing the rails and getting ready to put the solar panels on, it's quite exciting. Because a lot of times you can get hung up between talking at the table and the rolling out of a project. And anytime you get to that, it feels good. It makes you feel like you're doing things that you're actually supposed to be doing. You're looking to be wrapped up in a few days from now and we'll be plugging into her. Day like today, we can't help but think we should be generating a lot of power with our new solar panels. We've got quite a good momentum going now. I'd like to see that continue. This uh, heritage center here is really an icon of the islands. So even from the highway, people are gonna drive by and see these solar panels and think, okay, what can I do to chip in, you know? It's easy to task somebody else with the responsibility of, of you know, going to greener energies, but you know, if we all ask ourselves, what am I doing to contribute? Out here is where we get a lot of our local food, right here. So I'm on the water as much as I can every any given day that the weather cooperates. You know, when I'm in my boat and I look and I'll see those solar panels and I think, wow, like, it's a start in the right direction. I'm from the traditional side of being raised, which means that my uncles took care of me uh, when I was old enough to move and go out on boats and stuff like that. So my uncles always took me out there. So I got to learn the land. I got to learn how to do everything through sea, through land. What we have here is we have a longhouse that is acted like it fell, and then we added uh, the feature of the solars on it. So when a longhouse is standing like this, it fell like this, and that's what we're representing here on this system. 
and Dave himself is uh, invited me to do this um, the uh, the drawings and the planning and the milling and putting it all together and uh, yeah solar I I'm, I'm interested in it I'm loving this project I'm doing for it uh, and uh, hopefully looking forward to the future of more of it happening with me being involved so We're at Balance Rock, which is a beautiful, just natural phenomenon. Um, and it's been standing there for, I think, thousands of years. And through everything that it's been through, it still stands. There are even stories of Europeans that came here and tried to blow it up with, tried to put like load dynamite underneath it and blow it up to knock it over. They tried to pull it over with horses and just, it would not move. And I think, that's a really good metaphor for our nation too. Through everything that we've been, we're still standing, we're still here, we're still very strong today. Tatlani Gordini Kharigas, a hide singer scouting in Dangasho Kilt Lager. Jika Wai Nai Ungu scouting a sing Dangasho Kilt Lager. Wadokan Anis is scouting in Dangasho Kilt Lager. A hired good at a long is the skin of Wadokan, Pagail Gai Gilt and Piano. This center has become part of, of contemporary Haida life. It's not, we say it's not an institution, it's part of the institution that makes up modern Haida culture and so we have that responsibility here to not only provide information and inspiration and opportunities for dialogue and, and debate, we have the opportunity and responsibility to live what we're trying to present to everyone else and, and so putting these solar panels on the Heritage Centre isn't just a ticking off a box, it's in, completely in line with how we should be living as Haida.